My name is Kristen Kibblehouse, and I am the Community Engagement Manager for the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy. The Atlantic White Shark Conservancy, we are a nonprofit based in Cape Cod, specifically in Chatham, Massachusetts, where we are helping to fund and also as well as collaborate with the research done by Dr. Greg Skomel and the Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries, where they are looking at great white sharks here off of our coastline. So thank you guys for joining in. So first off, if you do have your worksheet ready to go, I just kind of want to go over what a Venn diagram is and how you can use that today. So today we are going to be, well, I'm going to be teaching you guys what makes a shark a shark. And with that, your Venn diagram is gonna help you guys figure out and put down those characteristics that we are going to be talking about today. So with that, on the top of your sheet, it should show a Venn diagram with two circles and it says sharks over it and fish. Now how a Venn diagram works on the side of your circle where it says sharks, you are going to put down those characteristics that make a shark, specifically a shark. And then where it says fish, you will be writing down what characteristics are different that make fish specifically a fish. And in the middle where those two circles overlap, that will be the similarities between the two. So what are the things that sharks and fish have the same? In the next one below, you will see ones that says sharks and whales. And we'll talk about that as well in my presentation today. So you guys, again, will be writing what makes a shark a shark, what makes a whale a whale, and then in the middle, what are those similarities that sharks and whales have. So with that, guys, I think we should just get started. I see people writing that they know what a Venn diagram is. That's amazing that you guys are already a little bit shark smart already this morning. So let's get started and let's figure out what makes a shark a shark. So my first thing I have to ask you is, is a shark an octopus? Hmm. I want you guys to think about it for a little bit. Is a shark an octopus? Now you're probably going to think, and I hope you're, you're typing in and saying, no, a shark is not an octopus. Now, if we look at our photo here with our shark, our specifically our great white shark, and our octopus as well, what makes the octopus look different from our shark? Now, if you're saying that it has tentacles, it has eight tentacles to be exact, so that is a difference of our octopus and our shark. Our next thing I want you to think about is, do you know what category of animals our octopus is under? Do we? So our octopus is under a name called the cephalopod family. So octopus and squid and other marine animals in our ocean are under the cephalopod grouping in our oceans. So next, is a shark a whale? A little bit harder of a question for us this morning. Is a shark a whale? Hmm. Now, if we are guessing at home, no, a shark is not a whale. They are two different animals in our oceans. Now, just like how I asked, do we know what an octopus is, which we, they are cephalopods, do we know what a whale is? Give you guys a few seconds. Okay, so if you are saying mammals at home, you are correct. A whale is a mammal. Now, if you guys are doing your Venn diagrams, this is now something that you can put under your whale section on your Venn diagram. So a whale is a mammal. Now, are we humans mammals? If you're saying yes at home, you are correct. Yes, we are mammals just like whales. Now, there are specific things that if you look at an animal to know if they are a mammal. So when we are looking at mammals, 
we are knowing there's a few different things that make them special. One, all mammals must have hair, nails, structures on their body. So us humans, we have our hair, but we also have our nails as well. Now for a whale, you're probably thinking, a whale, that's a mammal, but it doesn't have hair like we do or fur, like maybe your dog or your cat at home. But a whale does have very tiny microscopic hairs along their body. And for the humpback whale that you are seeing on your screen, the humpback whale, they have their teeth are called baleen. And this baleen helps them filter all the fish and other things that they eat in the ocean. And that baleen is made out of the same materials that our nails are made out of as well. Also with mammals, they have to give live birth. So all mammals give live birth to their young, but then also what is a characteristic of a mammal to help feed that live birth? Mammals produce milk as well to feed their young as they are growing. And then last but not least, very something that is, should come easy to us when we are thinking about what makes a mammal a mammal is, we breathe air. So that's why you notice dolphins or whales as they're swimming in our oceans come up to the surface to breathe before they go back down and dive. So that is our differences between a shark and a whale. They breathe air, they have hair or nail like structures, they give live birth and they produce milk to feed their young. And now my last question, is a shark a fish? Now, I'll give you guys a few seconds. If you wanna discuss with your, your parents at home or your grandparents or your siblings, if you're watching with them, is a shark a fish? Okay, so after you guys are thinking, is a shark a fish? Yes, a shark is a fish. Now, you guys might be a little confused about that, but yes, a shark is a fish. And this is how we're gonna get really now into the nitty gritty of our talk today of what makes a shark a shark. And I love when I do this program in schools to give a little bit of this brain teaser. And that is all sharks are fish but not all fish are sharks. Hmm. All sharks are fish, but not all fish are sharks. And I'm gonna pause with that brain teaser because I see that a lot of people are asking about the whale shark. So I wanna clear that up really quick. So the whale shark is a shark, it is not a whale. So the whale shark, the reason why it got its name, the whale shark, because it is a very large shark in our ocean. It's actually the largest shark in our ocean. It can grow up to 40 feet long, which is as big as a school bus, but also that whale shark gets as large as that humpback whale, as I showed in our last slide. So this is why they call the whale shark, the whale shark, because it can get as large as a whale. And it also filter feeds like plankton and small algae to eat, just like some species of whales do. So I know that can get a little confusing when, when we look at names of animals in our ocean, but the whale shark is a shark and not a whale. So back to us talking about, is a shark a fish? Yes, a shark is a fish. And going back to that kind of brain teaser we just gave, is that all sharks are fish, but not all fish are sharks. So let's go into that why and figure out, well, what makes a shark specifically a shark? So first off, that makes our shark a shark is our gills on their body and specifically what we call the gill slits. Now, do we all know what the gills are used for on sharks. Give you guys a few seconds.
So if you are saying that the gill slits on sharks is what helps make sharks breathe, yes, that is what makes sharks breathe. Now, I'm gonna show you a photo of a great white shark that has been identified here in the Atlantic Ocean. And with that, you'll see that red arrow is pointing to that gill slit that I was talking to you about. Now, sharks and all fish in our ocean have gills because that is how they are able to breathe underwater. So that is a similarity between sharks and fish in our ocean. They both have gills so they are able to breathe. Now, what makes them different between sharks and other fish in our ocean is that sharks actually have five gill slits on either side of their body. Now you can see from that red arrow that that will slit there where that red arrow is pointing to, that is one gill slit. Then you can see the other four behind that first one. Now, all sharks have to have five gill slits on either side of their body for that fish to be considered a shark. But some sharks do have six gill slits and others do have seven. And it's pretty easy to figure out who does because one, you can count but also it says it in the name. So we have the blunt nose six gilled shark. We have the Atlantic six gilled shark. We also have the seven gilled shark as well. So that's how you can really tell the differences between which shark has five or six or seven. But for a shark to be considered a shark, it has to have at least five gill slits on either side of their body. Next, Talking about what makes a shark a shark, we have to talk about their skeleton system. Now, if you guys followed along in our shark story time last week, we mentioned this fact a few times. So I want you guys to try to remember back from last week, and maybe you can remember what a shark skeleton is made out of. So I'll give you guys a few seconds to discuss it home and think about what is a shark skeleton made out of? Now, if you are saying cartilage at home, yes, a shark skeleton is made out of cartilage, just like your nose and just like your ears. That is what your shark skeleton is made out of, that soft kind of bendy tissue that is in your body as well. Now, this is what makes a shark specifically a shark. All other fish in our ocean, their skeleton is made out of bones, like our skeleton is, made out of bones. So on your Venn diagram, if you guys are writing as you are going along, this is something that you can put in the fish side of its circle, that they have a bony skeleton and the shark has a skeleton made out of cartilage. And in our ocean systems, if you guys, maybe you're at this point in school when you're looking at the looking at the animal kingdom and how it splits up between kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genius, and species, sharks are under the class of elasmobranchs, meaning they have cartilage skeletons. So stingrays and skates also have a cartilage skeleton as well. Now today, I wish I could be in all your homes today to be able to show you guys these in person because they are super cool. But today I'm able to show you this is a piece of a shark skeleton. So you can see that it almost looks like bone because it has that white color. But you can see this is the piece of a vertebra from a poor beagle shark. Whoops. And so you can see here that that piece of cartilage on this animal. Next, so we'd already said that sharks have to have at least five gill slits on their body. And now we know that sharks have to have a cartilage skeleton. Next, we're gonna talk about shark fins and how sharks move. So I want you guys to sit and imagine and think about a shark swimming. Maybe you've seen one swim in, in an aquarium. Maybe if you watch videos online about sharks. And I also want you to imagine how a fish swims as well. 
Maybe you have a fish tank at home and you watch your fish swim at home. Maybe you have gone to the aquarium and see fish has sw swimming there as well. And I want you to imagine how their fins move, okay? Now, after you imagine that, now you're probably imagining a fish like a clownfish, like Nemo or Dory or some fish like that. Or maybe you have a goldfish at home and you can see how their fins move that their fins are nice and flowy. You know, they go with the motion of the ocean. Now, if you think about a shark, does his or her fins move? Hmm. No, their fins are very straight. They stick straight out on their body. They stick straight up. So with that, this is another characteristic of sharks is that their fins are hard and they are rigid they do not flow with the water. And with that, this goes with that cartilage skeleton on sharks. Their fins are made out of that harder cartilage that makes them stick straight out. And it's almost very similar to how our ears stay straight up because of that harder cartilage that our ears are made out of. So I hope that makes sense over the live stream. But yes, sharks have a harder, ridger, rigid, more rigid fins on their body. Next, we're gonna talk about the shark jaw and shark teeth. With that, I want you guys to imagine, what do you think makes a shark jaw different from other fish? And I know a lot of you guys might, might be thinking they have pointy teeth, but not all sharks have sharp and pointy teeth. The whale shark that we mentioned about earlier they do have teeth, but they are very flat and very small because they don't need point pointy teeth to eat because they are filter feeders. So I want you to think about it. Now, if you have been paying attention to our stories last week, we also mentioned this fact as well, that sharks have multiple rows of teeth in their jaw. How us as humans, we have our one row of teeth Sharks have five rows of teeth in their jawline. And again, I wish we could all be in person to see this, but I do have a shark jaw today as well. And this jaw is from a poor beagle shark as well. And with this, I hope that the camera on my computer picks it up, but you are able to see the multiple rows of teeth that this shark has. So I hope this is able to pick up as it looks like on my end. But you can see how this shark has multiple rows of teeth. So this is another characteristic of sharks where that jaw will have five rows of teeth and they can continuously replace one another. Not like us when we lose our baby teeth and then we have our adult teeth. But if we lose our adult tooth, unfortunately, we're gonna have to go to, to the dentist to get that fixed. So sharks have five rows of teeth. And what's really great with sharks is that depending on your species of shark, their teeth shape will be different as well. So I have today a great white shark tooth that you can see. It's a very classic triangle shape. It's very hard to see that usually it would have serrations on the edges of the tooth, but because this is a fossilized great white shark tooth, you really can't see those edges anymore. So I am seeing a lot of questions on the live of why do sharks lose their teeth so often? Well, because sharks, as we've mentioned, they can't move their fins. They have to eat by strictly just using their jaw. Now for a great white shark, these guys eat marine mammals like seals and whales. So for those, their prey is very fatty with that thick blubber that marine mammals have on their body. So with that, their teeth go through a lot of work to try to break through all that blubber every time they have to eat. So just like how this tooth is dull from the fossilization process, their own teeth can start to get dull as well. Maybe if you're eating a chicken at home or a steak, that 
maybe that knife at home is hard to cut through the meat and you have to sharpen your knife. Well, sharks can't sharpen their teeth. So this is why they have, have so many teeth and they lose them so much. So they are able to be best hunting as possible. I hope that makes sense here over the live stream. So as a little bit of a review, we have sharks have to have five to seven gill slits. They have a, they have a cartilage skeleton. They have hard and rigid fins and they have multiple rows of teeth. We also have another fact about sharks about, oh, before we get into our other fact about sharks, we are going to answer another question. I see a lot of questions coming in about why is this shark tooth black? Well, when shark's teeth are in their body, they are white, but once their tooth falls off, like this tooth did, it goes through the fossilization process. Now, most likely when sharks are losing their teeth, they are in the ocean, this tooth will fall off and then it goes down into the ocean floor. Now, depending on where that tooth is and what kind of sediment that tooth is in, it will change the color of that tooth because of the minerals that are in the ground or I should say the ocean floor. So this is why that this tooth is black because of the minerals in the ocean floor that changed that color. Now there are other places in the world, like down in North and South Carolina, where they find megalodon teeth, the minerals in their ocean floor, they actually can change the megalodon teeth to almost like a yellow gold color. So it really just depends on where teeth are found and what kind of minerals and substrate that that tooth has been sitting in for millions or thousands of years. So I hope that answers that question really well. Next, our other characteristic that makes a shark a shark is something about their skin. Now, maybe you guys have touched a shark before, again, at an aquarium in, in a touch tank, or maybe you guys have gone fishing and maybe you have caught a shark fishing. You've maybe been able to feel that shark. Now, a shark's skin, if a shark was in front of me and I was able to run my hand down, the shark's body that shark would feel nice and smooth but if you would rub your hand back up the shark's body it would feel rough like sandpaper and that is because shark scales are different shape than a bony fish's scale would be and those scales are called dermal denticles now these dermal denticles mean tiny teeth like structures. Now I have a 3D printed version of what a dermal denticle would look like. Now this is, I keep dropping things this morning. <laughs> this is a dermal denticle enlarged. And with that, you can see these little ridges here. Now these little ridges, one, help make that shark skin rough and bumpy when you feel it. But this also what makes our shark aerodynamic. Now, once these scales are all laid together, this makes our shark really efficient swimming through the water and very aerodynamic swimming through the water. And there's actually airplane co companies that look at shark skin to see how they can maybe apply that and enhance technology on airplanes as well. So that's really cool. So then last but not least, what makes our shark a shark is their senses. Now, I want you guys to think about how many senses do we have as humans? How many senses do we have? If you're saying we have five senses, correct, we do have five senses. We have sight, we have hearing, we have touch, we have smell, and we have our taste. Now, sharks do have all those five senses that we do but sharks have a special sixth sense in their body. Now, does anyone know what that special sixth sense is? Hmm, what is a shark's special sixth sense? And it is something to do with their nose. You can see with the arrow there. If you guys are saying ampullae of Lorenzini, <laughs> yes, you are correct. That ampullae of Lorenzini is our shark's sixth sense. And that ampullae of Lorenzini is our shark's sense of electroreception. 
So that is our shark sixth sense. Electro reception and is done by the ampullae of Lauren Zini. Now here I have a photo of another great white shark that we have identified off of the coastline here and in the Atlantic Ocean. And with that, if you look at our shark around its nose, you will see those tiny little dots around the nose and along the top of its mouth. They almost look like little pores. Now, if you are able to identify that, those are the ampullae of Lorenzini that we are talking about. So this is our shark sixth sense, that sense of electroreception. Now, you're probably thinking, what is electroreception? Well, sharks have this really awesome ability to sense electrical and bioelectrical pulses in the water. So electrical, meaning anything that technology, those any kind of electrical pulses that cameras give off, technology gives off, that boats can give off, but then also bioelectrical pulses. So us as humans and all animals give off very, 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 very small electrical pulses in our body, and that is our heartbeat. So with that, sharks can actually detect heartbeats of other animals. Now, I know that might sound a little scary, but this ampullae of Lorenzini, you actually have to be very close to a shark for this sense to kick in, about 60 centimeters, almost a foot away from the shark for it to be detected. Now, sharks use this to help figure out what is around them. Also, sharks use this for hunting as well. So. This is how sharks really are able to keen in and zone in to accurately hunt. Now, if we are all familiar with hammerhead sharks, which I'm sure maybe some of us are, you know, those sharks with the long hammer shaped head. I know this is my way of trying to be a hammerhead shark th this morning, but those sharks have these long heads and underneath that head is that ampullae of Lorenzini. Now, they use their head almost like how maybe if you go to the beach or if you're exploring your backyard or your neighborhood with a metal detector, they use that ampullae of Lorenzini under their head like a metal detector and they sweep across the bottom of the ocean floor to find their food. Hammerheads really like to eat stingrays and other fish that hide underneath the sand so for that, they use their ampullae of Lorenzini to help them find their food more efficiently. So as a review, that is our shark six cents, the ampullae of Lorenzini, which is that electroreceptive sense. Now, we're gonna go over what makes a shark a shark because that was a lot to take in. So our first thing that makes a shark a shark is those five, to seven gill slits on either side of their body. And the gills are what helps make a shark breathe. Next is sharks have a skeleton made out of cartilage, which is that soft tissue that your nose and your ears are made out of. Sharks have hard and rigid fins. They do not move. Sharks have multiple rows of teeth, just like the shark jaw here that I showed you. Shark skin is made out of dermal denticles or tiny teeth like structures. And then last but not least is that ampullae of Lorenzini or the shark's sixth sense of electroreception. Now with that guys, that is what makes a shark a shark and how they are different from other marine mammals. Again, my name is Kristen Kibblehouse. I work for the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy and yeah, thank you guys for coming today. Bye.